Welcome, Jim Miller, to Coaching in a Session. How are you doing today? I'm great. How about yourself? Doing well. Thanks so much for coming on today. I have you on as a health and wellness coach. And this is near and dear to my heart because I think that health is going to be the first step on the road to anything when it comes to mindset, to happiness, to fulfillment. Because if you don't have a good vessel, let's call it that, how can you enjoy anything? If you want to be a good parent, you have to have a good vessel. If you want to be a good worker or good boss, you have to have a good vessel, right? And if we don't have that, we're going to have some big issues later on. We're going to be talking about your work. Can you tell the world who you are, what you do, and how you help? Sure. Well, my name is Jim Laird. I've been a strength and conditioning slash wellness coach now for going on over 25 years. I work with a guy named Dr. Leland Stillman who's an MD. We've been working together now for about a year and a half, two years. And I owned a gym in Lexington, Kentucky, or I worked in Lexington, Kentucky for uh, almost 20, like 20 years. I've been at the NCAA Division I level, a couple different universities, I worked with pro athletes. My main wheelhouse, though, was training women, believe it or not, uh, got, getting women into actually lifting weights. You know, when I started in the late 90s, early 2000s, women just didn't lift weights, getting them going into that. And then I had some of my own health challenges that really kind of changed my view on fitness and how I dealt with my clients. And so uh, now a lot of what I do with Dr. Stillman is lifestyle coaching, getting people to change their habits. And I noticed over my 20 year career, I was talking to, to people about things, the same things all the time. A lot of people don't realize is that the basic fundamentals if you're a coach, you're going to be repeating those things over and over and over again. And even if somebody's doing really, really well, one day they're going to kind of swerve off the road a little bit and you're going to have to get back to the basic fundamentals again. Hey, are you getting your sleep? Are you getting outside? Are you eating enough protein? Are you, what's going on with you? And usually when people struggle, it's because they've gotten away from their fundamentals. And a lot of times the things that I see with Dr. Stillman is people that instead of focusing on their wellness are focusing on their illness, right? whatever they have that they've attached themselves to. So we really try to get people back to our basic fundamental habits, which is walk outside three times a day, prefer definitely getting your morning light. That's most important. Eating a protein at every meal, drinking high quality water, get the lights off at night and then have social connection. So we always try and start there with everybody, whether it's in our coaching programs or on the medical side. When we start to look at the fundamentals, which of those areas would you say people are suffering in the most? Do you think they're not getting enough movement? They're being very sedate. They're just staying at home. We have our remote jobs now. So people don't necessarily even have to leave their house. That can cause people not being mobile. It can cause people not getting enough sun. People might have a Keurig at their house. So they're just drinking coffee and they're not drinking enough water. What would you say is the one that's hurting people the most? I'd say the thing that's destroying the modern human is becoming a zoo animal. If you look at what happens to animals when you put them in the zoo and you take them out of their natural environment, they go crazy, they become unfertile, and they have all sorts of health issues. The average American spends 90% of their day indoors today. Children in particular are very susceptible to this. The average maximum security prisoner gets more time outside than children do today. So I would say the light that we're living under, we're living under fake artificial lights particularly, you know, for people like yourself with darker skin, it's even more important for you to get sun. People don't realize that artificial lights, particularly blue lights, mess with your dopamine, mess with your blood sugar. When you have a plant or an animal that's not doing well, usually they, you know, they look at the environment that it's in. They don't necessarily blame the plant, but particularly the plant. They were like, okay, what kind of light is the plant in? Is it in the right, to get in the right amount of water? Is it in the right kind of soil? And I think uh, particularly if you look like a country like India, the diabetes in their population is, is skyrocketing as their population goes from a agricultural outdoor population to like a tech population where they're moving inside. Uh, they're having a lot of, like look at blood pressure rates around the world as people get inside, they get, don't get as much sunshine. We're seeing blood pressure rates skyrocket. We're seeing as people become more indoor creatures, we're seeing skin cancer rates go through the ceiling. People are spending less time outside more now than they ever have wearing sunscreen, wearing hats. People in England barely get any sun anyways. And the, the more they get out of the sun, the more skin cancer they have. So it's wild. So that I'd say is number one. I think that's driving everything is people not 
getting out in nature. I definitely agree with that because we don't need to be in nature. Nature is scary, you know, just like from an innate sense of, of, you know, being cavemen, like why would we want to be out there where there could be something that can harm us when we have our safety and security inside our walls and comfort is going to be maybe the biggest obstacle and the destroyer of all of what is and can be us. If we decided to make some changes in our day, going out for daily walks, eating healthier, limiting our fast food intake or food that is more processed, we would be in better health. But yet today, it is touted as positivity. So no matter where you are on your scale, I'm going to call this a scale, and I use that just you know loosely, scale meaning the weight scale, but this scale of your daily habits and everything also, sure. we can be in different places. And sometimes you could be in a really, really bad place, meaning you can be a pre-diabetic, you can have all of these ailments lined up, right? And the doctor is telling you, hey, you need to lower this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And it becomes daunting. It's just like, you know what? This is too much for me. I'm just going to take the easy way out. I'm going to ignore it until it's truly a problem. Why do you think people give themselves that mindset of not taking action, even if they know the fundamentals, the lifestyle that they should be living or need to be living or want to be living? Why are people running away from it? Well, I don't think people are being told that for the most part. Most people are just like, here, take this metformin, you know, take this thyroid medication. Everything's going to be fine. There's, there's nothing you can do for your autoimmune disease or whatever. And then they seek comfort, like you said. No one educates them on, you know, like, for example, like you're talking about people struggling to eat, you know, good food and stuff. If you get outside, you get your melatonin in the morning, you get your circadian rhythm in order. Guess what? If you get outside in the morning, your sleep's going to be better. If you have better sleep, you're not going to crave as much garbage in your food, right? So it all kind of just spirals, right? That's why we like are getting outside and walking, you know, breathing through your nose, getting yourself calm and relaxed. That leads to better eating. That leads to better sleeping, which leads to better being you being able to train, which leads to you having more muscle mass and the protein helps you sleep more. The protein and all the hormones and amino acids combined with the sun help with, with hormones. It just kind of snowballs, right? I really, when people are in a really bad place, I just tell them to start with a few simple little things that that sunlight bleeds over into everything. Like it's like a little pebble that's thrown into a pond. It just ripples, right? And so I, I just think people, the pharmaceutical industry has no incentive to getting anyone better. Let's put them on a statin. Let's put them on uh, blood pressure meds. Let's put them on um, metformin and, and, and away we go. And we'll just live longer, longer. Our lifestyle has, I mean, if you look at, look at the seventies, right? You look at like Woodstock, you look at like pictures from the beach. There is no obese people in these pictures. How many gyms were there in the 1960s and seventies? How many women worked out with weights? Marilyn Monroe was one of the first women to actually strength train. There wasn't a gym on every corner, but people, you see pictures from the beach, you see people from Woodstock, people were fit and in shape. They had phys ed in school. Most people lived in the country. Most people did manual labor. Our modern world has pulled us away from, I think low level manual labor is one of the most beneficial things for our body, for like stress relief, for relaxation. Our bodies are meant to move and work at a low level constantly. And that way you build the reserve so you can handle stress if you have a, an emergency situation, right? But now we've got the phone, we've got this constant chronic low level stress. I compare it to you get in your car, you stay in your driveway, you start it up and you rev the shit out of it all day. You don't drive anywhere, you just rev the shit out of it. And then you wonder two or three weeks down the road, like, why is my car running weird? Like, why is the engine making weird noises? I didn't drive anywhere, but you rev the shit out of your engine. And so that's modern life. You order from Uber Eats, they come bring you food. You don't have to do any manual labor. You don't have to like cook your own food. You're, you're not doing gardening. You're not mowing the grass. Everything's done for you, but you've got this emotional, psychological stress, which I think is even worse than physical stress, right? Because I think physical stress to a certain degree is, is therapeutic. And then people are just walking around exhausted and then they try to go to a Orange Theory or a CrossFit or they think that 45 minute hit sessions a couple of times a week are going to make up for a horrible lifestyle. And it just, it doesn't work. 
that well. It doesn't work out for most people in that situation. One of the questions I want to ask, and this is might be a silly question, because I know people are thinking about it, is how much sun should a person get, number one? And then number two, is there a difference between direct sunlight and indirect sunlight? So for example, oh, I drive with my windows down in my car, or I'm at the beach and I'm always wearing sunblock. So what would be the appropriate ratio? Well, the answer to that is one, I'm not an expert or a dermatologist, but I have researched this a lot. And I have studied this for my own life because I had some illnesses that basically the sun basically saved my life. We know from the research that sun exposure increases life expectancy in all diseases, including melanoma. That's one. The second question is, is like, I'll flip it around on you is how much should a human run? And a lot of that is going to depend on how adapted you are to the sun, right? The big mistake modern people make with sun exposure is they only go out in the afternoon and they don't use the morning and the evening light is where the healing part of the spectrum is. The, the, the morning, there's more red. You have a big burst of blue in the morning that helps get your cortisol going and get you rolling, right? Then you have red and then you start getting the UV, which makes the vitamin D. It also, sunlight also is an opiate. It also you know, produced dopamine. You, so you get a lot of beta endorphins from the sun. A lot of people would argue we're like addicted, meant to be addicted to the sun. If you look at some of the past cultures that worship the sun, and then you get your high UV in the afternoon and how much of that you can handle is going to depend on your heritage and how much morning sun, how good your solar callus is. So somebody who's darker like you is going to require more time in the sun to make the same amount of vitamin D than someone who's, well, I'm Scottish, but I've spent so much time in the sun. I'm pretty, pretty tan. If you build your solar callus, you can handle a ton of sun. And the cool thing is, is if you are getting your vitamin D from the sun, when you have enough of it, your body will stop making it. Whereas if you're taking a supplement, you'll just, you'll overload it. So the body will roll back its production. I basically just tell people that I work with, as soon as you feel yourself starting to get too hot, just go in the shade, basically get in the shade. Like they do here, like in, in Nicaragua, they really, you know, they work. And then the most intense part of the day, heat wise, they go have a siesta. They lay in the shade and nap and take a rest, take a rest. They do most of their work in the morning and the evening. And the sicker you are, the more morning and evening sun you need. It's powerful because if we look at what scientists or you know like like doctors recommend they say five minutes like like it's only it's like only five minutes minimum it's interesting how we can be told one thing and one of the things that we are are suffering from you know the fundamentals and the lifestyle of health and fitness and like being in a good shape and of body and mind is that we don't have the education or that the education that we're being given is not a hundred percent accurate i would say has an agenda agenda so the agenda is to make people what sicker sicker it's not about health and fitness it's about making people weak sick and unhappy maybe i i would think so i think it's about making people complacent compliant consumers if you look at all the advice that was given during the the whatever you want to call it your bug it was the complete opposite of com any common sense that you would have right go inside disrupt your breathing lock yourself in your house it should be go out, get fresh air, get exercise, breathe through your nose, have good social connection. Did, they did the opposite. And it, it's just like, if you follow the American dietetics diet, you're going to get diabetes. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, and, and look at, we've got people like, I don't know how, if I don't want to get you banned, but we've got people like Bill Gates that are talking about blocking the sun. Or the US government is talking about blocking the sun and they think they have your best interests at heart. I think the road to hell is paved by good intentions, but you look at like some of the advice that's been given by the medical establishment, like back in the sixties and the seventies, smoking was deemed to be healthy. You look at the margarine, the trans fats, the, all that stuff that was deemed to be the healthiest thing ever. Now they're illegal because they know they cause cancer. Right. So sometimes, you know, now like look at what happened with statin drugs. I would love to believe that you look at the how many times the pharmaceutical industries have been sued, and the, uh, not pharmaceutical drugs are the number one cause of death in the United States now. Like these are prescribed pharmaceuticals. Why does a a Twinkie cost less than a carrot? Because the government is subsidizing all the food that makes the Twinkie. So something that grows in the ground is more expensive than something that's built in a factory. 
The bad food is really cheap because it's subsidized. The good food that's good for us is really expensive and only the wealthy can afford it. And the food is being engineered so that we can't stop eating it. The pharmaceutical industry can make billions and billions and billions of dollars. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. That's the way I see it. I think that's what it is. If we look at what schooling does, it builds and creates consumers. Teachers are in the business of creating consumers. And as we are growing up, we are in a classroom that is very similar to a jail cell, yet we get less sun than those inmates do, as we were talking about earlier. I think it's a minimum of 24 minutes of physical activity outdoors that is required by the state. Only 24 minutes. You only get 24 minutes outside. The rest is going to be inside at a desk by yourself, and you will have a special typically one time a day. And the specials will range depending on the school. Typically, it's around 40 minutes. You'll have art where you sit and you draw. You have music where maybe you sing and you just sit or you can stand. Some teachers might, you know, do some dances and stuff. Okay, cool. Gym, you will have some movement, but then even some gym teachers just do movies. We have a system that is not built on creating that flexibility in what a child should be going through, meaning being active, being outdoors, it is totally gone. And one of the things I wrote down earlier is when you have that child that, you know, let's say three years old, it is easy to just give them an iPad or to turn on the TV because we are busy as adults. And if you're a parent, I understand that. But then as sometimes, you know, like, like you have to realize, are you setting them up for greatness or are you setting them up for failure? And the system that we have right now, the system that you were just speaking on is not created to help people succeed and prosper. Otherwise, we wouldn't have an obesity problem. Otherwise, everyone would be flourishing in their business and professional and even in their personal lives of relationship and marriage. I mean, everything is in dismay and it's all stemming from they don't have the proper lifestyle. They have not been educated. They have just been schooled. So there's just so much going on. I think indoctrinated would be a better word. Indoctrinated. Yeah, I actually had an episode that just came out and I had a gentleman come on talking about that. And the indoctrination is just a preset or like a pre-thought uh, set of thoughts and beliefs. So like someone else thought this for me. So I'm not thinking for myself. So critical thinking is out the window. So I'm not going to even worry about if I'm going to eat cheeseburgers every day. I'm not going to think about the repercussions it's going to have on my body because people have already been telling me what to do, what to think. And so now I don't even have a voice. Yeah. Well, they did studies back in the 70s of fluorescent lighting versus natural lighting and the, the behavior differences. They know this stuff. And what I was originally an elementary school teacher before I got into strength and condition coaching. Same. And I learned in school that basically the system was designed to create obedient workers, right? And we know how much play is involved in the development of the brain, yet we bring the children into a classroom and put them in a desk and try to force them to learn how to read instead of just letting children do what they do, which is what we play games, learn by mimicking being very active, that's how they learn. But we're forcing preschoolers now to sit down and try and memorize things. And that just, it doesn't end well. Cause that's not the way children, that's not where our brains work. Even as you age, movement and moving around and doing different activities really helps with your cognitive development and function. That's one of the reasons you're seeing so many people, you know, struggle today. And so, you know, all this stuff is fairly common knowledge. It's just deliberately being ignored, unfortunately. And the cool thing about today is a lot of this information is out there. So the people that are awake and present can, you know, kind of go against the skip. Like there's a reason why Bill Gates and all the, if you go to like Silicon Valley, you can't get in a Waldorf school or a Montessori school. All the tech giants, they don't let their kids play with cell phones or iPads or anything. They send them off to, you know, Montessori. They send them off to the Waldorf school. They also have the money to have a, a nanny or housekeeper, you know, to entertain them. And so they don't, they don't get those things because they know what it does to their brain. Exactly. One of the schools I like the best is Montessori. It's just a preference of mine. I was a teacher also. I am very acquainted or to private schools, public schools, and I know the differences. And I actually taught swimming for almost six years. 
And cool. one of the things I was able to see is I would get hundreds of clients, you know, like over the years of just individual kids. And I got to see the private school kids. I got to see the public school kids. I got to see the Montessori kids, Waldorf kids, all of those. And I just liked how the Montessori kids were able to question, just question me. And it's like, like why in, in doing this, like really being critical thinkers. And even as, you know, like I started when they were young, like three and stuff. And then I even kept in touch with them when they were now teens and like able to drive. It's like, it was interesting how we see the development, but yet many people don't even focus on the development of who they are as people. So if we look back at when we were children, we can see all the correlations of the things that is now our life. So if we are now a bit heavier, we're not as active. What happened? What was that discrepancy? Because sometimes people might have been a high, like a high school superstar, basketball player, volleyball player, whatever sport they played, and now they're sedate. Why do you think people have such a drastic shift from when they were younger to now when they're older, they're having more difficulty? I think the busyness of life. I think the fact that we've emphasized materialism so much. And because of inflation and things like that, people have to work so much just to break even. Also with athletes, with kids that have played sports their entire life, they've always had someone telling them what to do. And then they, they just get out of the busy world with taxes and with families and stuff. They, you know, they just lose it. And a lot of the kids don't even have a good place to start because you know, sports is so competitive and so much about money and so much about camps and scouting instead of personal development and athletic development. So a lot of kids just get really frustrated and just quit. They don't even play because it's not fun, right? You know, all the travel, baseball, and, you know, these kids are playing sports, the same sport year round. We don't really install healthy habits and, and the love for the outdoors and our culture like some of the European countries do. A lot of the other countries are way better at installing good habits, whereas we tend to, you know, most of the kids today are tech addicted and why, why would I want to go play outside when I can just scroll through my phone all day? You know, I was thinking about that the other day. I, I'm 49 years old. And I was thinking about, you know, I, I remember when I think I was in the third grade when Space Invaders came out. I don't know how old you are, but. 36. Okay. So you're just a baby still. You're a little baby. <laughs> I don't know if you played Space Invaders, but you can only play Space, Space Invaders. There was this little ship at the bottom of the screen. And you can move it back and forth. And then you have these little, like shields in front of you right and there's these ships that were coming down side to side it was like here 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 oh and you okay could yeah shoot, you, you could shoot them right mm -hmm. you could only play that game for so long like if you played it for 45 minutes you're like this is really crazy like this is dumb or you know some of the games it's like duck hunter and whatever then you would go outside and you'd still play because the video game was fun but it was maybe it was when i was i grew up in northern canada so maybe in the winter time when it was 40 below we'd play video games I remember watching TV like on Saturdays and I remember how horrible I felt staying inside watching TV. I just, my head would hurt. I just didn't feel good because I, I spent, I grew up on like in a farming area. So I spent the majority of my time outside. These kids today are literally have a screen from the time they're like two and they're in front of a screen from day one. So they don't really know what it's like to feel good. Right. Because before I would, you know, spend a lot of time outside. So I knew what it's like to feel good. I, I couldn't imagine what it'd be like today with all you've ever been in is in front of a screen. And that's the only thing that makes you feel good. There, it's interesting because there was a point in my life where I was spending so much time in the gym from five in the morning to like eight, nine at night. I wasn't spending a lot of time outside. When I did go outside, my eyes would water and, and burn and uh, I just didn't feel comfortable. And then I got really sick. I, I can get into that if you want me to. And then I met a guy who basically was like, you need to get more sun. For a couple months, it took me a while to to get it so my eyes would stop watering when I'd go outside. And then it became the opposite. Now, if I go into like a Walmart or a Publix or a store with fluorescent lights, my eyes hurt. Where the sun, the sun's great. I, the sun is great. I, I can handle really bright light. It's I flipped it around because I was spending, you know, as a, as a strength coach, you get up at five in the morning and you're working with people till eight, nine at night. So I was living indoors. And so I became a zoo animal. And then I had to learn how to, to live a more out. And that's one of the reasons I'm here in Nicaragua is to live a more outdoor life. That's interesting. Because if we do look at the animals of the zoo, aquarium, whatever, they're not the same as if they were in the wild. And even the ones, you know, in the safaris are different too. 
But we do have to get back to the aspect of being outdoors. Yes, I understand you have a nice house. You want a nice big house. It's an American dream, right? You want a nice big house and then you work so hard for, for 30 years. You're suffering and slaving away for this home. And you want to spend as much time with this thing, I'm sure, as possible. But there has to be a different way. And one of the things that is in my agenda is to have like a family farm where it's going to be a generational thing because I'm going to make sure that it can't be sold. Like I'm going to give it to like a trust or like a lawyer's. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm going to make sure it cannot be sold. Everything is taken care of. That's just like one of my goals in life. And this is more of like family goals, not so much of helping the world goals. Because I understand something about being outside, working hard. All of that is gone today. You're not going to find it. I have a garden or I have garden plots in my backyard currently. We love to garden. And we have a one-year-old or actually a two-year-old now where he is going outside playing with dirt, playing with water. We have a park near our home. So we go to the park. We do a lot of things. And let me tell you, it is inconvenient as, you know, I have to do a lot of stuff. I'm sure you have to do a lot of stuff too, where I have business, I have employees, I have all, I have a lot of stuff that I have to worry about. And I will spend two, three hours outside with him because I understand that if I don't do it now, it's going to have severe repercussions later on in life. And when I get that, you know, farm type of living situation, we're going to probably have some chickens and stuff like that. We got to take care of the animals and teach that to him at a very young age because boys especially are hit so quick with, you know, meds like, oh, he has ADHD or he has ADD, like he can't focus. Well, it's because they're in the wrong environment. So we have to learn how to get into the right environment. And I think our conversation today, getting back to the fundamentals, the lifestyle, it's all going to be important. That was basically what I wanted to say. And I wanted to give you an opportunity for some last words and then for you to tell the audience where they can find you. Sure. I think that it's dead on. And I, I love the fact that you're doing that. That's one of the reasons I love living here in Nicaragua is watching the children play outside and bare feet climbing up and down coconut trees you know, jumping off things. I mean, that's what children are designed to do. They're designed to play. They're not designed to sit in a desk all day or in front of a screen. My hat's off to you. My hat's off to you as well for teaching your children actually realistic, real skills that are necessary. And you mentioned animals in the zoo. If you look up what happens when you put an animal in the zoo, half of them are on like antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications to keep them from like tearing up the cell or it's just not good. And I would encourage people to be still and know. If you think about it, when's the last time you went out in nature and sat quietly in nature, close your mouth, put the tongue in the roof of your mouth, close your eyes, and just breathe slowly through your nose and relaxed. When's the last time you did that? When's the last time you laid in the grass in a park, closed your eyes, and just relaxed? Modern life has stolen that from us. And I believe that silence is like your body rebooting its hard drive or your computer rebooting its hard drive. I believe magical, magical things happen in silence. And we need more silence in our lives. So we need, you know, you don't have to become a monk, but you can't be running around like a chicken with your head caught off, which what most people are doing today between the phones and the screens and the busyness of their lives. So just take some time, get out in nature, get, try to get more real light than fake light, get the lights off at night, or at least get some red bulbs and get out in the morning in particular and, and just Try and get outside more and get some silence in your life. You can find me at stillmanwellness.com. We've got all sorts of coaching programs. I have a YouTube channel, Jim Laird. Dr. Stillman and I are going to start doing more lives. If you get on our newsletter, we do a weekly lesson like from all sorts of different things, from different diseases to light to minerals to whatever, you name it. But we do a different webinar at Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. If you get on our email list, you get access to those webinars. So. Perfect. And I will make it easy for everyone. All the links will be in the description box below. I loved our conversation today. It was one that was needed and necessary because people sometimes they need to be jolted awake rather than waiting for that doctor's note or for that bad thing to happen in their life because that is what we typically tend to do. We wait for the bad news before we take action. But today is going to be a, an experience that you can say, all right, I could take action. I can start to implement some changes. They don't have to be big changes, people. Just start small, all right? Go for a walk around the block. If you don't want to go for a walk around the block, go to your mailbox at least. 
And even if you don't have any mail, just get into the habit of getting out of your house. It is easy to go to the fridge, to sit down on the sofa, put on your favorite TV show and, you know, kick up your feet, right? Because you work so hard. And I understand times can be difficult. Things can be hard right now, but do not stay in that. You have to give yourself a platform where you can create more energy in your day and create a better and a healthier, happy body and mind. And then everything starts to change in your life. It's that simple, but it, it is a bit complex in the sense of you have to get over what you have been taught and begin to learn the new things. Thank you so much for coming on, Jim. Keep doing the amazing work that you're doing. You as well. Thank you so much.